Action, an order now from officials for people who live near Gun Lake to leave immediately. And this is what is driving the urgent calls to flee. The fire burning on the east side of Adams Lake took a dangerous turn Wednesday night. Dozens of homes surrounded by flames. BC Wildfire on the defensive Thursday afternoon saying the activity Wednesday due to an isolated localized wind event that caught fire behavior experts off guard. Now a two hour drive north of Kelowna in the Shushwak region, the Adams Lake wildfire, which has been growing for more than a month, suddenly traveled more than 20 kilometers in 24 hours, making it a challenge to get residents out, especially after two fires merged to create one big massive one. Here's CTV's Ben Milter. That's it. Gone. The red dots on this satellite image show how far the fire moved in just one 12 hour period on Friday. Oh, yeah, fire right by the bridge. Well, this is the dramatic race to get across that bridge before it was closed down. The single lane bridge links the North Shuswap to the Trans Canada Highway. It's considered the most critical piece of infrastructure in that area. Yeah, the RCMP is now evacuating people by boat with no warning. And everybody were out there and we were all trying to get sprinklers going and all of a sudden that just blew over the river and... Just in seconds, amazing. Oh, terrible. We just gotta get through it before it falls. Oh my God. We seen the wall of fire coming towards us and we had no choice but to back up. Homes restricted from their livelihood. They called themselves the Convoy of Truth and Freedom. About 20 of them descended on this roadblock demanding to be let into the wildfire evacuation zone, saying they wanted to deliver supplies. The demonstrators don't think they need to obey wildfire evacuation orders. I'm hoping to have a peaceful conversation with checkpoint officers on Highway 1. They say blocking the roadway is unlawful. RCMP say the intentions of those involved were to overwhelm the police roadblock and gain access into the area. Adding, officers were able to de-escalate the situation quickly. Well, when this got started last Friday, uh, BC wildfires didn't communicate with us very well what their plan of action was. And unfortunately, we did not see them in the community, but we didn't have good feelings about where BC wildfires was because they didn't let us know. So about 300 people is my guess stayed in our communities. Even without power and water, many are refusing to leave. And so friends and strangers loaded up their boats, refusing to let anyone go without basic necessity. But some people have lost their homes, some people have lost their businesses, and some people have lost both. So yeah, it's pretty heartbreaking. The hardest part is not being able to help each other. Like we sort of feel like criminals. You know, like we're trying to get food from one place to the next and then we're getting stopped by the police. It feels like we're transporting drugs rather than food. No, it's not the fires anymore. It's the authorities that I fear. The BC Wildfire Service says critical firefighting equipment has gone missing in the Shushwap area. At least 15 sets of equipment containing pumps, hoses, and sprinklers, even an ATV, were stolen. In one location, crews have had to replace a full gear setup four times in the last two days. If there was equipment that was laying on the road that we could use, um, we did borrow it, potentially move it. I mean, I wasn't involved. We respect and really appreciate the desire to help. We've had some instances of threats, abuse, theft of equipment. I find it astonishing uh, that we are at this stage of the crisis and uh, f the owners of Facebook and Instagram have not come forward and said, look, we're trying to make a point with the federal government, but it's more important that people are safe.